Hey guys, Edgar here, Guns For Everyone. I wanted to talk about a very basic, very intro level subject. Um, this is a subject that gets talked about a lot uh, around the internet. Uh, for sure, I'm not the first one who's talked about this, but I think our approach is different enough that I, I think it deserves a video. Uh, I think it deserves this conversation. Again, plenty of videos exist out there. I think the biggest difference between what we talk about and the way we approach it and uh, in other videos that exist that are very similar to this is the context. Uh, choosing a gun for self-defense. You've heard it before. Uh, if you put that on the, the search bar, wherever it is you're searching for it, there are going to be hundreds of these videos, if not thousands of these videos that exist. Uh, but I think one of the, the key elements that a lot of human beings miss is the context. Uh, choosing a gun for self-defense. And I think that's the key thing is for self-defense. I, I have to look at a firearm that is going to work in the most likely of circumstances that I find myself in, in the context of self-defense. So when it comes to choosing a gun, I, I think it's a really long conversation. So for the interest of time, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to do multiple videos about different things to look at. And uh, in one of my classes, one, or, well, in my classes, the seminar style classes, one of the, the exercises that we do is very annoying, I'm sure, for, for students. It's, it's this exercise of me asking students, what's important to you? And very frequently, what the students will, will come up with is, well, it needs to feel good. And my, my response to that all the time is, okay, cool, but, but what does that mean? Uh, what is it must feel good? What does that mean? And usually it gets followed up with other buzzwords, right? The, these buzzwords are words that the industry uses, but nobody really has a meaning for it, right? And that, that's an issue. When you use buzzwords, you, you're just saying words that we all know, but nobody really has a definition for it. So if I ask you, what does that mean? It must feel good. It feels good. What, what the fuck does that mean? Um, usually gets followed up with like, well, it must be comfortable. And once again, I ask the question, what does that mean? Comfort? Uh, what does comfortable mean? Uh, and usually people will lead to, um, changing the subject without really trying to, or intending to change the subject. So it goes from, it must feel good to, it must be comfortable to, well, it needs to fit. So now we're in, in something that, that has nothing to do with the original thing. It must fit. So what does that mean? It must fit my hand. And I think ultimately that's, that's what humans are actually talking about when they initially say, I want it to feel good. They really mean I want it to fit good. So I, I, I do want to kind of give you some demonstrations about how it must feel good. Um, overlaid over this one, I'm going to place the videos of, of and the images of how it should fit. But essentially what you're looking for is you're looking for a firearm that is um, going to be up as high as possible in the webbing of my hand. When that is accomplished, it's a very basic thing. Most, most of you guys watching this video already know this. Uh, but my knuckle, my knuckle on my thumb, uh, this very first knuckle, the one nearest to my palm, uh, that knuckle, I want it to be completely on the opposite side of my shooting hand. So if I am a right-handed shooter, or if I'm shooting with my right hand, that knuckle on my thumb ought to be completely on the opposite side. Why do we want that? Well, we want that so that you can ensure that you can manipulate whatever features there. Uh, you, the, the magazine release, um, the, the slide lock, it's a slide lock, not a slide release, um, or a safety. If you're a weirdo in 2024, you have a safety, uh, you should be using that safety so you, you kind of ensure that you can use whatever features on that side but also if you notice when you hold that firearm and you have the knuckle completely on the opposite side of your shooting uh, hand what ends up happening is you end up cradling the beaver tail or the back strap or, or whatever it is you call it um, the rear of the firearm uh, the beaver tail the the upper part of the grip the back strap is supported it is again cradled so to speak and that stabilizes the firearm that prevents rotation on this axis and it prevents rotation on this axis so you're stabilizing the firearm and obviously that means more accuracy downrange when i am touching the trigger um, I, everybody probably already knows this you, you ought to touch the trigger with the first pad of your 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 trigger finger 
Um, so the first pad of your, your trigger finger ought to be touching uh, that trigger. Now, when I touch the trigger with the first pad of my trigger finger, I want there to be a space. That's on purpose. There should be a space between the frame of the firearm and your finger. Why do we want that? Well, we want that to ensure that when we press the trigger, it's actually a press to the rear. If you eliminate that gap, say you had a gap and you eliminate it, you put your finger in too deep, what ends up happening is you end up pulling the firearm. That sympathetic movement is going to make sure it's going to rotate the firearm. And now you might be shooting to the right. If you're a right-handed shooter, if you're a left-handed shooter, you'll be shooting to the left. On the other side, if your finger doesn't reach and you're barely touching the trigger, and that's why there's no space there, there's no gap between the frame and your finger, well, you're going to be pushing the trigger. You're going to be pushing the gun instead of pressing that trigger. And that's obviously going to cause inaccuracies to the left. If you're a right-handed shooter, if you're a left-handed shooter, uh, inaccuracies to the right. So this is the fitting portion of it. Um, choosing a gun isn't just about feelings. It isn't just about what we say is comfortable. Uh, sure, that can be a thing, but one of the things that we must acknowledge is that feel and comfort often come from a bias. Uh, I am biased to a particular brand. I'm biased to a particular look. I am biased to a particular what have you, right? Uh, some of you guys like hammered guns, so you're biased to those. And that's usually why I recommend not going off of just feelings, because feelings and emotions are often um, brought by those biases. My, my uncle has one, my, my grandpa has one, and my dad had one, so I must have one too. And when it comes to self-defense, the reality is that it, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. Is it the right tool for you? So I, I think usually when people talk about, and this gets proven in our classes, when we talk about what features are important and students talk about feeling and comfort, it generally speaking leads us to the conversation of fit. So it's really when, when, when people talk about fit, um, they initially talk about it as, as a feeling, but it, it must fit well. I think for the in, in the interest of time, we're going to make multiple videos about choosing a gun because it gets much more complex choosing a firearm uh, choosing a firearm has a lot to do with physics and not feelings uh, feelings is a component comfort I admit it, it, it's a part of it but we we must understand how momentum works and with the third law of motion equal and opposite reaction uh, even angular momentum right we need to understand how that works so when when it comes to angular momentum if I have a slide that's that's higher then my wrist, which becomes a pivot point, uh, and that pivot point, if my barrel is up here, obviously exaggerating, but if my um, barrel is too high, uh, that energy is coming up from the top, makes it rotate a little bit more. Um, so we wanna make a, a video dedicated to that type of stuff. Choosing a gun is, is much more complex than just feelings and emotions. Again, we admit that's part of the process, that, that has something to do with it. Um, but this is a tool for self-defense. This isn't your tool for, for fun or recreation. Let all the biases uh, and your, your wants and likes are all for the, the competition gun. But when it comes to self-defense, it's got to be a tool that's going to work. Um, so I, I think these, uh, this series deserves multiple videos so we can touch on every single one of these subjects a little bit more in depth. We look forward to, to seeing you in other videos. Comment, uh, share this video with other humans. Um, also, for those of you guys watching because you signed up for a class, I encourage you guys to go look at Isaac's videos. Uh, we'll link them down below. Uh, but Isaac has a series of very beginner stuff, very basic stuff, very good resources along with other self-defense law videos and uh, a lot of neat stuff for those of you guys that want to nerd out about all the shit. Um, go check out his videos. Uh, again, we'll link it down below, but if, if you just want to listen to it um, or if you're listening to this and not watching this, uh, go to Guns For Everyone Isaac, Guns For Everyone I-S-A-A-C, and you'll be able to find his videos. Uh, a lot of helpful tips and advice from, from Isaac. Uh, but anyways, hope you enjoy the video. Hope you like it. See you next time.